Hi, I'm Jackson Crawford. I'm an Old Norse specialist who, among other topics on this channel, has done a lot of deep dives into the poems of the Poetic Edda, where I read through each stanza of a given poem, explaining what the Old Norse says, not so much to translate it as to help you interpret the Old Norse. My interpretations are intended to be pretty neutral, presenting to you different opinions if there's a pretty wide range, but for the most part, just kind of as plainly as I can, describing what the Old Norse says. So what I'm going to do here is actually post the entirety of Locusena. Um, I'm filming the last part of it today, but then the first 25 or so stanzas are from older videos. They're going to get kind of pasted in uh, at the beginning here. All right, well, here we go with Locusena. I'll be reading this based on the text in uh, Jonas, Jonas Christiansson and Vesteden Olason's uh, Edukvaidi series. Uh, that is the new, really authoritative uh, version of the uh, text of the Poetic Edda in Old Norse. Lokasena means Loki's truth-telling, fundamentally. So Loki is a weak masculine noun in Old Norse. It ends in I in the nominative form but its genitive or possessive form, the form that means Lokis, is loka. Then there's the root san in Old Norse that means true. Senna is then to tell the truth. And so Loki's truth-telling, which we know better today under names like Loki's taunts, um, or some people use the pretentious archaic Scottish English term uh, flighting, um, fundamentally is about Loki telling the truth about the gods, and the truth is uh, an insulting truth the gods don't want told. Now, we begin in uh, the, the Codex Regius, the manuscript of the Portiquetta, with a prose foreword. Fro Agi Och Godum, concerning Agir and the gods. Agir er otru navni het gumir, han hav the buit osum ol. Tho er han hav di fengit ketil in mikla sem nu er sagt. Til therar vetslu kom odin og frig kona hans. Thor kom egi thri at han var i austervegi. Siv var thar kona thors, bragi og idun kona hans. Tyr var thar, han var einhender. Fenris ulver sleit hond ab honom, tho er han var bunden. Thar var njordr og kona hans skadi, froer og froje, vidar son Odins. Loki var thar og thionustu men froes, bugvir og boila. Markt var thar osa og olva. Ægir oti tvo thionustu men, fima fengar og eldir. Thar var lysigul haft fyr eldsljós. Sjolft barsk thar ol. Thar var gríðastaðar mikil. Men lofuðu mjók hversu góðir þjónustu menn ægis voru. Loki móti ægi hugira þatt og drap hann fímafeng. Þó skóku æsir skjöldu sína og uppðu að loka og eldu hann breytt til skógar, en þeir fóru að drekka. Loki hvarf aftur og hitti úti eldi. Loki kvaði hann. All that together says, Agir, who by another name was called Gumir, he had prepared ale for the Asir, the main family of the Norse gods, but also used collectively for all the gods. When he had gotten the big kettle, which now is said or told, so this comes right after the poem Humiskvida in the Portageta about uh, Thor and Tyr retrieving a, an enormous cauldron for making beer for the gods from Tyr's father in um, the realm of the anti gods, so called giants, the Jotnar, um, his father named Hymir. So this is following that story directly in the Poetica. Now, Odin and Frigg, his wife, came to that feast. Thor did not come because he was on the east road. Now, 
typically the gods, when they're represented as going uh, to fight with or otherwise engage the uh, anti-gods or giants of Yultnar, they go east. So that's what it means. Siv was there, Thor's wife, Bragi, and Ithun, his wife. Tyr was there, he was one-handed. Fenris Wolf, Fenrir the wolf, uh, took off his hand when he was bound. And of course, it's a very famous story, uh, told in full in the prose in it. Norther was there, and his wife Skadi, Freyr and Freya, and Vidar, the son of Odin. Loki was there, and the servants of Freyr, named Bygvir and Boila. There were many gods, Asir, and elves. Now, what exactly an elf is in Norse mythology is extremely vague. It's hard to tell what's going on with that term. Uh, I've always thought that it's either the same thing as dwarf entirely, or it is a broad term for supernatural beings lesser than the gods or Jotnar, but who are uh, positive that they're on the side of, of gods or, or human beings. So in that case, dwarf would then be a subcategory of elf. Uh, at any rate, probably these servants of Freuer, Bigvir, and Boyla count as elves, since they're not counted as gods anywhere, um, but they're also not mentioned anywhere but in this poem. Agir had two servants, Femafanger and Eldir. Uh, bright gold was had for the light of fire there, so the gold is so bright that it lights up the hall as if it were fire at night. The ale bore itself there, so presumably what that means, the, you know, even though he has servants, I'm not sure what they're doing in this case, the ale is like flowing on its own out of the keg straight into their drinking horns, or it's, you know, pouring itself from the ceiling. It's like, it's hard to say what's going on, but the ale is somehow serving itself. It was a place of great peace. It was a great place of peace. So in the uh, realm of the gods within their enclosure, uh, often called Asgard in English, uh, you're not supposed to, to draw blood, so it's a peace place. Men praised very much how good Agir's servants were. And by the way, the gods are called men. Pe uh, men, M E N N, in Old Norse, really is, is sentient beings, right? So gods and elves are praising how good the, the servants are. Loki could not hear that, and he killed Femifanger. Then the Asir, the gods, shook their shields and screamed at Loki and drove him away to the forest and they went to drinking. Loki came back and met Eldir outside. Loki said to him. So now the actual poem is beginning and after a brief message from my long-suffering sponsor, I will come back and read some of the first stanzas of this poem. So the poem begins with Loki speaking to Eldir, the servant of Agir that he's meeting outside of Agir's hall after he's been kicked out for killing the other servant, Femafanger. So Loki says, Seg thu that Eldir, swo at thu enugi fetti ganger framar, huat her inni hava at olmolum, sig tiva sinir. So say it, Eldir, so that you do not go one foot further forward. Now the not is the gi that's on Anu. Gi, if you if you remember from the videos where I've read through Havamal and Bolspa, gi is just a negative suffix can be added to pretty much any word. So not one foot, Anu gi feti uh, is what's, uh, the gi is the negative. So tell me that before you go, and, and you know, we kind of have to read before instead of so that you go one foot forward, but uh, that kind of conjunction is very uh, interchangeable in Old Norse poetry. So tell me before you go another foot forward, what the sons of victory gods, Sunnir Sigtiva, and of course it's put that way for alliteration. We've got uh, Leo the Halter meter here, and I've got a whole video explaining the details of Leo the Halter meter. But this last line has got to have uh, two alliterating stress syllables, so Sigtiva center, victory gods, sons. Uh, it's just a way of saying gods. So what the gods here within have at beer speech, at Olmol. What are they talking about while they're drinking? That's what he wants to know. 
So, Stanza 2, Elder said, Of vopen sin dirma, och um vig risni sine, sig tiva sunier. Osa och olva er her in i eru, mangi er ther i ordi vinner. So, the victory god's sons, the gods, talk, dirma, judge, about their weapons, of vopen sin, and about their deeds in war, the vig risni, of the gods and elves, osa och olvas, which gender florals of them, who are here within, er, eru, her, ini, not one man, man, gi, right, so the gi is the negative there. And by the way, for those of you studying Old Norse, uh, when you add the negative gi to uh, man, uh, it's just man, gi, even in the nominative, it's not mother, gi, man, gi is nominative. So not one man, not one person again, because this can mean gods, is a friend, er, vinner, to you, ther, in word, i ordi. So they're talking about the weapons and their deeds in battle, and not one of them is saying anything good about you. Loki said, says a three, in skalganga agis haldir i, o thatsumbl atsio, yol ok ovu furi ek o sasonum, ok blend ek themes wa meni All right, so he doesn't say I, but the I is implied shall go in, skal ganga in, to Agir's uh, halls, e Agis Haller, to see Atsio upon that feast, to look upon that feast, all that sound. I bring ik furi yol ok ovu, so like slander and bad words to the uh, Sons of Gods, Sonum Osa. They're called Sons of Gods rather than Gods, again, to fill out a metrical line. And I blend, ek blend, for them, Thame, in such a way, swore their mead, Mioth, with a curse, with badness, mani. So, and I'll blend their, their mead with a curse. Elder said, stanza four, Vets tu, ev thu in genger, ag his halir i, O that sumblatio, ropi ok rogi ev thu uis o hol regen, o ther munu theu thera that. You know, if you go in to Agir's Hall to look upon the feast, kind of mirroring what Loki said in the previous stanza, if you pour ev thu uis slander and you know bad words, ropi ok rogi, upon the faithful gods, o hol regen, they, thou, will dry it munu therathat o ther on you. So they're going to wipe it off on you if you pour it out on them. Look, he said, Sansa 5, Vets tu that eldir, evit einir skullum sor urdum sakask, eudigar verda mun eki ansvorum, ev thu melir til markt. You know it, eldir, if we too, vit alone, einir, should exchange sakask Injurious, injuring words, sort ear them. I would be ek mun verda rich in answers, eudigar ansforum, if you spoke too much, if tu melech marked. So, if we were to compete in words, I would be all the better if you spoke too much, because you speak badly, right? You speak so stupidly or badly that I'm, I'm going to be better off if you, if you talk too much. So he's very dismissive. Sidan gek loki in i holena, en a ther so er fyrr voru, quer in var komen thognadu ther alir. So then Loki went into the hall, and when they who were within saw who was come within, quer in var komen, they all went silent. Ther alir thognadu. Loki said, Sansa 6, Thirster ek kom thesar halar til. Loftor um langan veg, osu at bidja at mer en gevi meran drik mjadar. I came thirsty, a kom thirster, to this hall til thesar hallar, lofter, that's another name of Loki, on a long road, um langan veg. So he acts like he's been gone a long time and he's thirsty. He's setting up this situation where he's this poor wanderer who's come in looking for hospitality in the hall that he's come across, right? Much as the uh, beginning of Hovmall's structure, all about wanderers and the hospitality they need when they come to your home. 
and I've come at Bithya Osu to uh, ask the gods that they give me at Gebi Mer one ain famous drink of me, Maran Drik Myadar. Sansa 7, he continues, of course, you know, he's a guy who just murdered the waiter and he's come back in to act like he's been, like he's never been there and he's, and he's thirsty. But he continues, Hui thegeth er swo thrungen goth a ther malla ne meuth, sessa oxtadi velet mer sumbliat eva hetith mechedon. Why are you silent, hui thegeth er, you angry gods, that you may not speak? Choose for me, Velid Mer, at the feast, at Sumbli, seats and places. Right, so give me a place to sit or stand or, or, or take my station here. Or order me from here, at the Hatith Mik Hedon. Order me away. All right, so now Bragi, fairly uh, obscure god, said, stanza 8, Sessa Oxtadi, Veliather Sumbli, at. Asir Aldregi, Thviat Asir Vitu, Huem Ther Aldaskulu, Gambansum Umgeta. So he kind of echoes Loki here. The Asir will never never choose for you, Velia Ther Aldregi, at the feast, at Sumbli, seats and places, says Oxtadi, because the gods know, Thviat Asir Vitu, uh, with who, Huem, they. With, with who among men, Huem Alda, they shall get Ther Skulgeta, a joyful feast, Gaman So, you know, they know who they want to show a seed, and it's not you, because they know who they want to have a nice feast with. Loki said, Sans 9, Mantu thought Uden erviti ordaga blendum blow the salmon. Olvi pergia lets tu egi mundu, nema ochor veri bodum borit. Do you remember Odin, when we too, Vit, in early days, Ordaga, blended our blood together, blend and blow the Saman? You said, let's to, thu, let's, you would not, mundu egi, bergia ulvi, you would not taste ale unless it were born, it were carried, nema borit, very borit, to us both, okur bodum. So you... You and I blended our blood together in ancient days. We swore you would never taste ale unless it were also served to me. Now, this story is not told anywhere. This is the only hint about it. But there's a pretty good chance that this is the entire reason why Odin keeps Loki around, considering that Loki causes a lot of trouble for the gods and ultimately will fight against them at Ragnarok. It's because Odin says in Grimnismal that he lives on ale alone. And so if he can only be, well, ale and wine, alcoholic drinks alone, uh, much like uh, certain people I'm related to. Um, and since he lives only on alcoholic drinks, if he can only be served them when Loki is too, of course he can keep Loki around. But we don't know why he made this oath. Stanza 10. Odin said, Ristu tho vidar ok lot ulfs fodor sitias umbliat, sidros Loki kvedi lastosovum egis holo i. So rise then, Vidar. Now he's talking to Vidar, his son, the so-called silent god, the one who's going to avenge him on the wolf Fenrir at Ragnarok, which is interesting given that he then says, let the wolf's father sit at the feast. So he's calling out Loki's role in the ultimate destruction of the gods when he's asking Vidar, the faithful one who will avenge uh, Loki's faithlessness on Odin, or well, Fenrir's attack on Odin, uh, to give up his seat to the, the, the wrongdoing Loki and calling it out very explicitly. Since Loki may speak blasphemous words, bad words, slanderous words, last of them, about us, us, in Agir's hall, e Agis Holu. Thostod vidar up oxkenk the loka, and other han druki kvadi han osona. Then vidar stood up, and he served Loki, and before he, being Loki, drank, he spoke uh, to the gods, Kvadihan Osana, stanza 11. Helir Asir, Helar Osinor, Ok Ol Gin Helo God, Namaso in Os Er Inar Sitter, Bragi, Becum O. Hail the gods, hail the goddesses, Helar Asir, Helar Osinor, and all the very holy gods, Ok Ol Gin Helo God. 
except that one God, Nemaso in os, who sits within, Nersitar innar, Bragi, on the benches. So this begins the part of Lokasena where he starts individually calling out the different gods and goddesses and insulting them. He has different things to say about the various gods, but he mostly just calls the different goddesses whores. And we will begin in our next installment of this read-through of Lokasena with those various insults that Loki puts on the gods and the gods put on him. Stanza 12, Bragi is the speaker. Mar ok meki gevek ther mins fjor, ok bytir ther svo begi bragi. Sither thu osum ovund um geldir, gremdu egi goda ther. So, I give you, this is a present tense being used as a future tense, pretty common in Old Norse and other languages that don't have a uh, conjugated future. So we can read that as, I will give you a horse, mar, and a sword, maki, of my treasure, means fjör. And Bragi, speaking of himself the third person now, Bragi will pay Bittir you with a ring, so baugi swole. So what he's saying is, you know, you're giving me this insult. I would be expected in the Norse code of, of honor and manliness, strength scopper, to respond violently. I am, however, um, trying to keep the peace here, and I will even give you stuff to stop uh, insulting me. <laughs> Lest, see there, you pay uh, malice ovund to the gods, awesome. So, Seether, Thu, Gjaldr, Ovund, awesome. Do not anger Egi Gremthu, the gods, God, at you out there. So, don't make the gods angry at you. I'm going to give you stuff to try to pacify you and make you uh, stop these insults before they begin. Of course, he's going to fail. Loki responds in Sansa 13. Yos. Och armbeuga mundu ävera begge vannar bragi. Åsa och olva är her inni eru. Thuert vid vig varstar och skjärastar vid skott. I notice this stanza is in Galdralag, the meter of uh, magic, which um, I've discussed in a video about uh, Leo the Hotter and its derivative meter Galdralag in another video. It's not really clear why he would use the uh, sort of magic associated meter Galdra Log here, uh, since he's not casting a spell or otherwise trying to create a magical effect that we can tell. Anyway, he says, Bragi, you will always be, Mundu Avera, uh, empty, lacking, vanner, of both, Begya, a horse and arm rings, Jos Ok Armbauge. So you don't have a horse and treasures to give, Bragi. Of the gods and elves, also Ok Olba, who are here within, Er Eru Her Ini, you are, Thu Ert, the wariest Varaster against battle with Vigs. You're the one who's, who's most worried about battle, the one who's least likely to be seen in a battle. And you are the uh, most worried Skjarrister with against shot shooting. So you're either uh, most afraid of getting shot with an arrow or maybe, and I guess this would be even more damning in a way, the one, you know, most afraid to, to pull the string on a bow or something like that. Anyway, he's saying, you're a coward. And the reason you would be poor if you're a coward in a raiding culture is kind of an obvious connection if you think about it, right? He's saying, you're, su you're such a wimp, you're not even going out there and raiding and, and killing people for this stuff, you got nothing to give me. Bragi responds in Sansa 14. Vetek if fir utan verak. Swalsen fyr in an emk, agis hol um komin, hovu thit, bara eki hendi mer, letak, leta ek, ther that fyr ligi. I know, ek veit, if I were, uh, if verak, and that's vera, the subjunctive first person past of vera to be, with ek i suffix to it as a k, so if I were outside, fyr utan, as I am inside, swosem emk fir inon, uh, that's m am with ek i suffix, that's just a k. So this is, the second line is kind of a throwaway, just this is our uh, required alliteration. If I were outside, as I'm now inside, pretty much all we need in the English translation is if I were outside, as opposed to inside. Uh, as I am currently inside, uh, 
come into Agus Hall, into Agus Hall. So if I were outside instead of inside Agus Hall, I would bear ek bara. Bara is the past first person subjunctive to bara carry. So I would carry ek bara your head that hovud in my hand e hendi mer using the dative to show possession of body parts with hendi. Interestingly, not with hovud where we have a regular genitive or not genitive but a genitive derived possessive personal. Uh, personal phenomenal adjective uh, to show possession. I would let you have that for your lie. Ek letta their thought fear ligi. With, uh, and, and letta we can really take as like, I would yield that to you uh, for your lie. So you would get paid back with a missing head for your lie. I'd cut your head off for lying like this. Look, he says in response, stanza 15. Snyalar ertu isessi skalatu swo gura bragi Bekskrautudr, vega thugak, ev tu reither ser, hyksk vater, water hyrir. Some interesting stuff here. Uh, you are bold, er tu snjallr, in your seat, isessi. You shall not do so. Skalatu, gerusvo. Bragi, the uh, bench decorator. <laughs> so he's calling Bragi, really, this is pretty damn close to the English language insult bench warmer right he's the one who's always on the bench right he's not out there doing stuff he's not fighting he's not not doing anything cool he's sitting on the bench all the time drinking but also he's kind of insulting his masculinity because he's calling him like a bench decorator you could see that being used positively about a woman right you know we're praising the beauty of this woman who who, who decorates right beautifies this hall uh, being used of a man that is being accused of cowardice is pretty extra damning because of that little tone of praise um, that, that would be there probably if you were talking to a woman. Uh, you go, okay, go you to fight, gak thu vega. Gak is the imperative, right? The command form of ganga, walk or go. So go, you go fight. Come, come fight me, bro. <laughs> That's pretty much, I guess, what that'd be in English. If you are angry, if thou ser raider. Now, in the uh, poetic line here, we would actually expect raider to alliterate with vega in the line right before it. That's a good indication that the stanza was actually composed back when that word was, in fact, raider, as it was in Icelandic probably before about 1000 or 1050. Uh, it's a pretty early sound change in Icelandic. It takes a VR and makes it just R. Um, those words still have VR in Danish, Swedish, and some of East uh, Norwegian. So, for example, in, uh, in, in Eastern Norwegian, you can say uh, vre uh, here from, from Danish vre uh, for angry. Uh, so, in, in, in Icelandic, the troll this is reither, um, but about 200 years before it was vreither. Pretty good indication the poem is actually much older than the manuscript it's written on. Anyway, a brave man, a huatr man, huatr, uh, Fears nothing. Hisks fyrir vatters. Now, hikr sik, which is uh, what hiks is composed of, it's like thinks self, hiks fyrir sik, thinks before oneself. So, like, anticipates, thinks about what's before him. So, fears nothing. Vatter. All right, so you're, you're brave in your seat. You're not going to do it, Bragi. You're a bench warmer, a bench decorator. Come and fight me if you're angry. A brave man fears nothing. All right. After a quick word from my sponsor, I'm going to get you uh, next with stanza 16. Ithun, the wife, Bragi, responds. <laughs> Right, so in stanza 16, Idun, Bragi's wife, she is the keeper of the apples that keep the gods uh, from aging. She turns to her husband, Bragi, and she says, Bivek Bragi, barna sivir duga, ok alra osk maga, at thu loka kvedera lasta stovum, agis halu i. So, Bragi, I bid you, I ask you, to avail the peace of children and all adopted children, ok alra osk maga. 
interpretations differ on what she's talking about. Is she talking about the peace of like the sort of children of the gods, i.e. the gods? Or is she somehow, uh, is, is, is what she's really talking about that she wants Bragi to uh, keep the peace for the sake of his children and adopted children, right? You know, don't fight Loki, you might get killed, and then what's going to happen to our children and adopted children? It's possible that the lines aren't well preserved because the sense is just, it, it seems kind of isolated from anything that's actually going on. But, uh, but that's a possible interpretation. She's, she, uh, Bragi, uh, avail the peace of the children and the, all the, uh, the adopted children. She doesn't say your, so it's really hard to say what's going on. But I would say probably my preferred interpretation is she's talking about somehow their children and adopted children, and he needs to do good by them by keeping the peace. That you, Thu, do not speak, Kveder A, words of insult, Lasta Stolvum, at Loki, Loka, in Agir's Hall, E, Agus Holu, which is, of course, where they're feasting right now. Loki says in response to her, stanza 17, Thegi Thu Idun, and this is the first of our big Thegi Thu shut ups that start so many of our stanzas. Thegi Thu Idun, Thik Kvedek Alra Kvenna, Ver Gyarnasta Vera. Sees tu arma thina lager iter thvekna um thin brotherbana. So shut up, Idun, silence, Idun, thegi thu Idun. I say you, ekve thick of all women, alra kvena, to be vera the most lustful for men, ver gyarnasta. Now, uh, as in many societies where men are expected to court women and not the other way around, I mean, this is a pretty pretty common thing. Um, it is an insult to a woman, period, to call her lustful, right? A woman is supposed to be a little bit more modest and, and, and wait for a man to make the first move. So to be called lustful is, is pretty bad anyway. But he's going to make it much worse in the second half. Since you, sits tu, lagdir, laid your arms, thina arma, your your extremely clean arms, ether thvegna arms. And of course, high status women are going to be cleaner. So that's probably what he's talking about. It's, it's kind of code for you know your your beautiful arms since you laid your very clean arms around your brother's killer um thin brother bana now we have no idea who Ethan's brother is her family isn't recorded anywhere um so this is not a uh, story that's been told anywhere but uh since a lot of loki's other insults are demonstrably true by reference to other etic poems or stories in snorri's prose Anna, it is possible there's a lost story in which Ethan possibly um, uh, suffering from, from some kind of deception or spell, slept with whoever killed her brother, whoever her brother was. And of course, it might have been Loki himself, considering that he's the one bringing it up. Ithan says in response, stands at 18, keeping a cool head, she says, Loka ekvedka lasta stovum agis holui braga ekyuri bjorreban vilkat ek at it vredir vegisk. So, I do not speak ekvedka. Notice we have ek repeated both as a whole word ek and as a suffix k on kved, speak, and then we have the negative suffix a. I explain all this a lot, <laughs> probably too many times, in uh, the breakdown videos on Hovmal, which you ought to check out if you haven't yet. So, a is a negative suffix you can add in poetry. So, I do not speak ekvedka. Uh, blasphemous, insulting, mocking, words, last of them, at Loki, at Loki, Loka, in Agus Hall, Agus Hall E. I calm, ek curi, beer, cheered, bragi, bior, ravan, braga. So just saying, you know, bragi's, bragi's getting a little drunk. I'm going to, I'm going to calm him down. I do not want, vilkat ek, again, ek repeated is both a single word ek and a suffix k on vil want, and then the negative suffix at, I do not want, ek vilkat, that you too at it and it is the early form we sometimes see in poetry of the second person plural pronoun um uh thit you too y'all too i do not want that y'all too fight one another vegisk veggie is a subjunctive to vega fight sk makes it uh reciprocal so they're going to fight each other angry right there and again we have good evidence in the alliteration here 
that this poem dates to before the change of VR to simply R in Icelandic, which would have happened about 200 years before this poem was written down, because Reyðir angry would have been Vreyðir at that earlier period, and it would have alliterated then with other words in this line, Vigisk and Vilka. Now Gevjun, a uh, fairly little-known goddess, comes up basically here and in the very first part of the Prose Edda um, frame story. She says, Sins of 19, Hui et asir tveir skulud inni her sor urdum sakask, lopskithat veit at han liken er og han fjorg ol hryol. Some interesting word things here. Um, why, hui, should skuluth you to it tver, again with that archaic form it for uh, you to, y'all to. Why should y'all to gods, asir, here within, her inni, exchange sakask, notice that reciprocal suffix sk on saka, exchange sore words, injurious words, sor ir them. And by the way, that word words there is not the typical orth, neuter noun, but rather the diminutive that kind of um, kind of minimizes the words, right? Kind of makes them like these little words. What you do to make these diminutives is you add an I to the end of the roots, or, or the, but that I causes umlaut, I mutation. Uh, for complicated reasons, you don't have the typical uh, o slash i umlaut of o here, but rather a y that makes it look like the root is actually a u. Uh, I'm not going to get into that, but this is a uh, a diminutive. So she's saying your your like your little injurious words, right? Your little your your little insult words. Now you can do the same thing, by the way, for those of you studying Old Norse, uh, maybe with my videos or or with say Fox and Barnes, your introduction to Old Norse. Um, you can make these diminutives pretty much any word. Just take the root, add an i. And then uh, I mutate the root. So, for example, um, you can talk about uh, a man, person, mother, the root of which is man. If you want to talk about like kind of a, a dismissive, you know, this, this little man, someone barely worth considering, that's a many, right? I at the end of the root, I mutate the root. Okay, so why ought y'all to gods exchange your little injurious words here within. Lofter, which is a common alternate name of Loki, and then we have this negative suffix ki added to his name um, for somewhat complicated historical reasons. Lofter ki actually uh, emerges as Lopski, like this, L-O-P-Z-K-I. Remember that Z in Old Norse represents uh, T-S. Lopski, so um, Lofter, Loki, knows it not, veit gi thought. Lofter veit gi thought would be a more English word order. Lofter doesn't know it, that he is, uh, like this, Lakin, it, it really means like played, but, uh, so like, is, is she, is she saying like, he doesn't know that he's being, um, like played a game with rather than actually insulted like she's trying to calm him down so it's like look you don't you don't realize we're just we're we're just we're just fooling with you man we're just we're just ribbing you look it doesn't realize that we're we're being playful maybe is, is a way to, to put it that but it, but she says that he is played on air laken and all the gods old fjord love frio han him so look look, look he doesn't even know that we're just playing with him and and, and all the gods love him now, that interpretation isn't totally secure. Fjorg is not a word that we know from anywhere else other than this line of this poem. Uh, but we have to assume it means gods based on uh, what the context is. Uh, Frio, love, is a rare word, but we see it in a lot of archaic poems, including here in Hovmal. And it's actually the verb from which the English word friend and the Old Norse word friend, uh, friendy, excuse me, uh, cousin kinsmen are derived because it's, those are the people that that uh, you're in a loving relationship with right loving uh free friendy comes to mean kinsman in old norse and friend obviously in english now loki does not respond uh courteously to her he says in stanza 20 thegi thu gevyun 
Þess mónek nú geta að er þykk glapti að geti, sveinn inn hvíti, er þeir sigli gaf, og þú lag þeir lær uvjur. So again he refers to an unknown story. But he says, shut up Gevin, I will now ek mun nu mention this, geta thes, Old Norse students, geta, to get, beget, means uh, mention if you use it with a generative object like this. So I will now mention it, get to this. When a, th so he says, when the white boy er in huiti Spain. Now, white typically means beautiful, and it's more often used with women than with men. Um, it, this is a very typical adjective for describing a woman as attractive. For describing a man, it's a little bit more suspect. Uh, it is used of Balder, who's sort of cartoonishly beautiful, but there's maybe a slight note of, a, of effeminacy to, to its use with a man. So when the, the beautiful boy um, tempted at your mind, glopthe at gevi, basically tempted you, seduced you, is how we can take this. When he, uh, he isn't stated, but um, we can kind of supply it here, er, Han supplied, gave, gav, you there a sail uh it's not really sail it's like a tapestry when he gave you you know a tapestry some some pretty uh woven thing and you okthu laid lag there your thigh lar uver and then him we can supply so when you laid your thigh over him so again basically he's calling her a whore right yeah some some pretty boy uh, paid you some some trifling thing and you laid your thigh over him with obvious uh, sexual coital implications there. So in 21, Odin interrupts Loki insulting the little-known goddess Gevjun and he says, Ur ertu Loki, ok ur viti, er þú fær þér Gevjun at kremi, því at aldar urlog, hyg ek at hon ul um viti, javan gorla sem ek. You are crazy, Loki, er to ur Loki, and out of your wits, ok ur viti. When you get Gevyun, er thu fer Gevyun, at anger at you, at kremi there, so when you get Gevyun mad at you. Because, thviat, I think, ek hig, that she knows, at hon viti, all fates, all urlog of the age, aldar, so she knows perhaps all the things that are coming in this age, all the fates of the age. Or it could also be all the fates of, uh, of, of, um, of man, mankind. It's another possibility. Just as well as I, Yavin Gore Lesson X. She knows these fates just as well as I do, as I, Odin, do. Look, he says, Sansa 22, Thegi thu, Odin, thu kun der aldregi de la vig medverum. Oft thu gaft themer thu gevaskildera inum slavrum sigur. Shut up, Odin, Thegi thu. You never knew through Aldrig Kunir to deal out, right, to apportion Dela battle among men, vig med verum. You often gave, through oft gaft, to those who you should not give, theme er through skilder a geva, there we have that negative suffix a on skilder should, the less deserving, inum slavrum sicker. So you often gave victory, to those less deserving who you should not give to. This is that last half. Odin says, Sansa 23, Vets tu, evet gav theim erek geva neskilda inum slavrum sigur, ot havetar var tu fyrjord nethan kyr mokandi o kona, ok hever thu thad born of borit, ok hugda ek thad arks adal. So you know, Vets tu, if I gave evet gav to those who I uh, should not give theme erek skulde negeva, the less deserving in slavrum sigur victory. You were vartu eight winters otta vetter below the earth fir yorth nethan, a cow in milk cure mokandi, and a woman okona, and you have born children there okthu hever borit barn thar, and I thought ok ek hugda that thought. Uh, the nature adal, of one who is arker arcs. So you were down below the earth for eight winters. You you were a cow and milk, and you were a woman. And you had children there, and I thought that was the nature of one who is 
arger. Uh, arger being the opposite of the complement word dränger, arger implying effeminacy, cowardice, homosexuality, and other uh, such traits. Notice that this stanza is in Galdralag, the meter often associated with magic spells or talking about magic spells. Again, like the earlier stanza we noted that uh, in the last video that had that was in Galdralag, there's no obvious magical content here, except maybe Odin trying to conjure some memory of, of, of something that might have been forgotten or not known to others. But uh, often there's no obvious magical content to Galdralag stanzas. Loki responds, stanza 24, in thick si the kothu somso you e, octratu ovet sem volur, vitska liki fortuvertio duvir, ok hugh the ectat arx adal. And they say, and kothu, or they said, kothu is a, uh, a lesser known uh, uh, past plural form of kveda uh, they speak. So they spoke, they said, you thick to practice sather magic, sitha, on Somsoy. Now, Somsoy is the Danish island Samsa, which is often associated with magic and weird events. So they say you, you practice the sather magic, the sort of, um, this magic associated with women and, and, uh, and bad behavior among men on this island Samsa, much associated with such stuff. And you struck on a vet, I'll come back to this word in a second, like voler, and a vulva is a witch, a fe and a particularly female uh, practitioner of Sather. So, uh, the word vet doesn't occur anywhere else, and we're not exactly sure what it means. Um, when I translated the Poetic Edda, uh, I mean, really, I was doing it in 2013, but it got published in 2015, um, I took this as you struck on particular clothes like a vulva would, like you put on particular clothes, you dressed like a vulva. Other people have taken it, uh, since that's not a common meaning of drepa strike, to put on clothes, as you struck on a uh, drum. Uh, it is really, really hard to say what exactly is meant uh, to be going on here, though, but he did something like female witches are supposed to do. You went for two over the, uh, the, the human people, the Verthios, so probably really among the human people, among the Verthios, um, in the likeness, Liki, of a uh, warlock, Vitka. So this is a masculine form of the same word that becomes witch in English. And I thought that was uh, in the nature of one who was Arger. So he's responding with the exact same accusation. You did something unmanly, Odin. And Frigg responds, 25, logum ikrum skilith aldrege segia segium fro, Hatit asia tver drugdug i ordaga firisk a forn rock firar. So, the word you or y'all is not stated here, but the verb implies a subject y'all should skilly never all dragi tell segya about fro your fates ikrum urlogum uh, for men segim. So you should never talk about your fates, your deeds, your your events before people in front of people. What you two gods, what are y'all two gods, what it tver asir, endure drugthuth in early days, the ordaga. Min firar, uh, put away, put far away, always ancient events, foreign rook. So uh, probably with an implication of should, men should all, you know, put behind them these ancient events, right? What happens on Samsa stays on Samsa. All right, Loki says in stanza 26, Thege thu frig, thu ert fjorgens mar, ok hevir a vergjorn verit. Er tho vea ok vilja, let's thu ther vidres kvan, boda i badum um tekit. Silence, frig, you are fjorgens girl. Now we don't know who fjorgen masculine is. The nominative or dictionary form of this name would be fjorgen with two n's. Now there is a feminine with one end at the end, which is Thor's mother, also known as Jorth. It is possible, in fact, not that unlikely, that Fjörgen is a name somehow associated with Thor if it isn't even an old name of his. I say that partially because it's his mom's name and then partially because the Lithuanian god Perkunas and the Russian god Perun, who are extremely similar to Thor, 
have names that are directly cognate with Fjorgen. They would come from the same Indo-European name. But what are we to make of Freyg being Fjorgen's girl? She, there's no reason at all to think that she's, you know, Thor's daughter or girlfriend or anything like that that would be covered by, by girl. So presumably the poet of this text didn't think so. Uh, possibly at some point this Fjorgen character gets split from Thor if it's originally a name of Thor. Uh, we just don't know. This is the only time that name Fjorgen comes up. Usually, mad girl, indicate a daughter when used with a name like this, uh, but there's no way to say that maybe she's not, you know, Fjorgen's girlfriend or what have you. Whoever Fjorgen really is. Alright, so be silent, Frigg. You are Fjorgen's girl, and you've always been man-yearning, lustful for man, Vergjorn. When you let, let's to, was thu, suffix to the verb let's, you let, they and Vili, these are Odin's brothers, uh, be taken, the B Vera is left out as it often is in Old Norse, taken, taken both, botha, into your embrace, ibadam there. And remember we use the dative with body parts and the embrace is considered kind of a body part for these purposes, so bottom there, not bottom thina or something for your embrace, vidris kvan, wife of Odin. So he's saying she's very lustful, and supporting that by reminding her of a time when she slept with Odin's brothers, even though she's Odin's wife. Um, Snorri in uh, the Saga of the Inglings says something very similar. He says that uh, Odin was gone for a long time, and at that time his brothers, uh, Vili and Ve, slept with Frigg. But Snorri might just be drawing on exactly the stanza of Lokasena. Snorri doesn't tell us anything new or different about this, this incident. Frigg replies, 27, Vetsu, evek ini attak agis holum i baldri likan bur, utthu ne kramir fro osa sonum, ok veri tho at ter vredum vegit. You know, if I had evek attak, with ex suffix the verb as well as as a separate word, if I had within any, in agis halls i agis hol. A son like Balder, Bur Likan Baldri, you would not go out thu ne kvamir ut. And kvamir is the past tense subjunctive second person singular of uh, come. From among the gods, the sons of gods, Fro Sonam Asa. And it would be fought ok vari vegit then at you, tho at there. By angry ones, Raidum. And uh, many editors will change that Raidum to Freidum, the older form, uh, because it is clearly intended to alliterate in this C line of Gyoda Halter with uh, Veget, suggesting that in fact the poem is uh, going to be dating from a point when the uh, Old Icelandic had not lost VR and had just become R, which would be before about a thousand. Remember, the poem was written down in the 1200s when Raven's already become Raven. 28, Loki says, En vil thu frig at ek fleri telia mina mainstavi. Ek thvi red er thu rida serat sidan baldrat solum. You still want, Frigg, that I might count subjunctive telia more of my evil deeds. Fleiri mina main stavi. And that staver is often just added to just about any noun in Old Norse poetry uh, just to get you an extra syllable uh, for metrical requirements. So main is an evil deed. Main staver is like evil deed thing, right? It's it's almost a, an empty word. I caused it ek rethfi when you do not see ser at Afterwards, or since, Sidan, Balder, Rida at Solum, ride to the halls. So he's taking credit for the death of Balder here. Now it's important to keep in mind that the prose, prologue, and epilogue of this poem that are in the Codex Regis might not originally have much to do with the original story behind the poem itself. Remember that the poem 
is in metrical, fairly strict language, not skaldic strict, but fairly strict language because it's poetry, and can be passed down for centuries more or less unchanged. The prose might have been added just by somebody in the 1200s, so you can't necessarily trust that um, the prose is the original context. I mentioned that at this juncture, again, I can't remember if I've mentioned this in any of the earlier versions of this, the earlier installments in this video series, um, because, you know, it would be strange if Loki had murdered Baldur and he was still invited to their feasts. Not that that might not have to do with the fact that he and Odin swore they wouldn't drink without each other, but it still seems odd after that heinous of a deed that he's invited. It might in fact be that the original context of Lokasena, regardless of what the prologue says, is that not that Loki had been invited and then had been asked to leave, but that he had never been invited at all, and he's crashing this thing uh, uh, completely from the outside, right? He's come in uh, and they never expected him. That also would fit uh, a little bit better with um, the punishments that are threatened at him at the end, because Thor and the other guys and such are threatening him about uh, the insults, not about you know, the, the killing of the servant at the very beginning, which seems to be sort of lost in the thread of the story as we go on. All right. 29, Freya said, Ur er tu Loki, er tu idra teller ljota leidstavi, ur log frigg hig ek at all vitti, thot hon sjolfki segi. Now this is basically what Odin said about Gevjun in Sansa 21. You are crazy, Loki, thu er ur when you count Teller your ugly hate deeds. Idra Lyota Leith Stavi. And there again we have Staver added more or less as an empty expansion of a word. I think ek hig Frigg that that Frigg at Frigg knows all fates, Viti all Urlo, with Viti in the subjunctive again. Though she does herself does not say tot hon siolf segi and then the gi at the end of siolf is what makes it not or didn't right it's the suffix negative loki says in sansa 30 thegi thu froya thick kanek ful gerva era ther vamavant osa ok olva er her ini eru fuer hevir thin hor verit silence froya i know you very well, ek kanthik ful gerva. There is not to you, era ther, a lack of fault, vant vama, so you are not lacking in fault. Of the gods and elves, osa ok olva, genitive plural, who are here within, er, eru, her, ini. Each one, where, has been, hevir, verit, your whoreman, thin, hor. Of course, this word hor is cognate with the English word. Or, uh, this is the masculine form, so I'm saying whore man to kind of emphasize that he's, he's, you know, emphasizing she slept with all these male deities. Uh, there is, of course, a feminine form of the uh, same word, too. Interestingly, as much as he insults all the women, he doesn't use that word, as I would call in Locusina. All right, Freud said in Sansa 31, Flo erther tunga hyg ek ather fremer mini ogot um gala. Reid ru ther asir ok osenur, rigor muntu heim fara. To you is a loose stitched tongue. You have a loose stitched tongue. Flo tunga. I think that ek hig at. That tongue, uh, something like it is, is left out here as it often is in poetry, will sooner sing for you mini fremer gala at, well, gala ther. Ungood, ogot, and then a filler word, um. So I think that that loose stitch tongue, that deceitful tongue, will sooner sing bad things for you. That's a lot like what we read in Hovamal Sansa 29, uh, that a hasty tongue does. It ogot um geller, it sings ungood. All right. The gods are angry at you, asir, ru, reither, ther, and the goddesses, ok olsenyor. You will go home sad. Thumont Faraheim Rüger. Loki says in 32, Thegi thu Freya, thu ert for dava, ok meni bland in mjok, sit stick at brother thinum stodo bleed regin, ok minder thu tho Freya frata. Silence Freya, you're a witch, thu ert for dava, 
and much blended milk blended blunden with cursing nanny does that mean she is a great cursor or she is much cursed uh hard to say since okay uh the seat stick in line four there uh is a contraction of seats with which is sense and thick which is you accusative singular um so I'm going to split them apart here and say seats sense blind gods blee the blind blithe happy cheerful cheerful gods blee the dragon caught stothu that's the transitive meaning of standa uh stand it's catch like you know you stand up an animal or something since cheerful gods caught you at your brother at thinum brother uh with the sexual implication of the at and you would then freya ok thu mundir tho freya fart frata which of course is cognate with the english word with the typical metathesis that separates english and old norse where r's and vowels are often flipped uh in one language or the other so there's a old norse vocabulary item 33 norther says thater vo lite tot ser vardir vers foi hos at the horse hiter under os rager er her in of common ok ever so born of borit it is very little it's a very little thing and an important thing though women thot vardir get foi subjunctive for themselves ser a man so it's a very little matter it's a very unimportant matter where the men get themselves a man a whore man hos or whoever worse those are in the genitive because when you get a romantic or sexual partner full um it's used with the genitive object hence uh fully verse hos horse all genitive singular masculine it is a wonder or that thing that other thing hit is a wonder or under when a rager os rager or arger uh the metathesized form very abusive word uh sissy is often my translation in english you know it implies like most of the negative traits sort of locker room talk about homosexuality cowardice uh homosexuality um you know weakness that kind of thing so when a, that a sissy god uh has come in here air common in hair and uh that one okso has born children hever borit barn all right loki said 34 thegi thu njorður thu vart auster hethan gísl um sendrat góðum humis möjar hofðu þekkat landrógi og þeri mun migu silence njorður you were sent thu vart sender from here eastward hethan auster a uh, uh, hostage gísl for the gods gísl at góðum now there's some weird stuff packed into these three lines it's not stated that this feasting hall they're in agir or gimir it's not explicitly stated here that they're in vanaheimer but it looks like they are because nyorther is one of the vanir and he was sent to the asir who are the default meaning of just words like god as a hostage at least according to uh, at least one of the versions of the story that snorri tells in the prose or ingling saga so i guess that means that oscar there in this understanding is actually east of vanaheimer which is also kind of strange because usually when we hear that thor is he austervegi what that he's on the the eastern road it means he's fighting jotnar so the gods enemies are often represented as to their east but it looks like to their west are these other gods these lesser gods the vanir and that perhaps agir or gimir is one of them all right hymir's daughters and hymir is the father of tyr according to the poem hymis kvitha he's one of the jotnar giants and gods but we don't know who the daughters are they never mention that side of here hymir's daughters had you hold the thick for a urinal at hland trogi literally urine trough hland trog and they pissed ok migu in your mouth e moon ther again using the dative uh to show possession of a body part moon there i'm not making this up 
either. You know, I'm kind of a prude. I wouldn't tell you it was this blue if it weren't this blue in the original. Njörður said in 35, Su erum líkun er ek var langt heðan gíslum sendar at góðum. Þó ek mógat þann er mangi fjór og þykir svo ása jadar. That, su, is to me erumk. And this is one of those places where mik or mer can be suffixed to a verb as umk. It doesn't matter if it's mik or mer. It comes out as umk when it's suffixed. So is to me er mer would be the full words here. A consolation liken. So that is a consolation to me. Su er liken mer. If I pulled that apart into prose. When I was sent er ek vark sender from here hethan far away Locked, a hostage to the gods, Gisa let go of them. Then I had a son, Tho ek got mog, one who no man hates, than er mangi fjor, and that one so seems thicker, a leader of the Asir, Yada Asa. So, of course, he's referring to Froer, Froer who is his son, who uh, apparently, according to this version, was born perhaps in Oskarzer, and has become considered a leading god among the Asir gods there. All right, Loki says in 36, Hatu nu njörður, hav þú á hófi þig, munka ek því lóina lengur. Við systur þinni, gats þú slíkan mog, og era þó ónu ver. Stop now, njörður, hatu nu njörður, have yourself in control. Have thu thick a hovi. Control yourself. Keep yourself in moderation. I will not conceal it longer. Ek moon ka. All right, so the ek is, is there twice. It's a separate word, and it's also the k suffix to moon. And then we have the negative a suffix also. So ek moon ka conceal lina it three because lina takes the date of object longer, linger. You had such a son. Thu gatst, thu suffixes too. Such a son, slick and mog, with your sister, with thinny sister, and is not, ok era, though, though, worse than expectation, ver onu. And this is one of the few times where, or one of the few poems where we have this archaic trait with this word, fon, expectation, uh, actually loses the v before the O, which is an expected sound change, but since it's an O from mutation, it, it's typically not changed because the, uh, but what's happened is the, because the N, it's actually raised that mutated vowel to a regular O. That doesn't usually happen in Icelandic. It does happen sometimes in archaic texts like this, and the V has dropped before that regular O rather than the U umlaut hook O. All right, Tyr said in 37, Froer er betster allra balreða, osa gordum i, möi hanne grötir ne mans konu, og löysir or hoftum huern. Froer is best of all bald, bald, all bald men, allra balreða, in the halls of the gods i gordum osa. He does not make a girl cry, han ne grtir moi, which if you know for skierness seems like an odd statement, nor a man's wife, ne mans konu, and he frees, ok loisir, each one wherein out of his uh, chains, bindings, or hoftum. All right, I'm going to get to some thoughts about Loki's response to Tyr in this next stanza 38. First, let me give you a quick word from my sponsor. All right, there are some vexed questions about this next stanza 38, where Loki says, Thegi thu tyr, thu kunir aldregi bera tilt me tveim, handar hinar hygri, mun ek hinar getta, 
er þeir sleit fenrir frá. Silence, tyr. You could never, þú kunnir aldregi, carry bera with two or among two með tveim tilt. I'm going to come right back to this tilt thing. All right. I will mention ek mun getta the that right okay he says that right hand inar hukri handar i will mention that one ek mun geta hinar and geta when it means mention takes a genitive object that's why these are genitives which fenrir er fenrir cut from you ripped from you slate fro there all right the second half is pretty clear loki is making fun of him because his son fenrir the wolf uh, bit Tyr's hand off, which is in fact, other than Hemiskvitha, where Thor and Tyr go to get the cauldron to brew the mead for the gods, pretty much the thing we know about Tyr from Norse mythology, right? If you read, you know, the big website of Norse mythology, the big book of Norse mythology, and all of the hundreds of variants that these things exist in, or the big uh, YouTube channel of Norse mythology, probably other than mine, uh, if mine counts. Um, you're going to hear a lot about Tyr, and a lot of that just comes from nowhere, right? Tyr actually doesn't do that much in our surviving sources, the prose and poetic edda. Now, that doesn't mean that Tyr was never an important god, but he's not important in our surviving sources. There's reason to think he was more important earlier. After all, there's a day of the week named after him, Tuesday, or Tyr Stagger. And um, his name is cognate with Zeus, right? It comes from the same Proto-European word as Zeus, or the first part of Jupiter, or Sanskrit, Jaspatar, these major sky deities. Um, but this is really the place that he, he comes up. I labor this because Snorri adds an odd remark that Tyr is not called a peacemaker among men. Now, we can often pretty clearly trace some of Snorri's comments about the gods to different poems in the Poetic Edda that he's quoting or paraphrasing, and that seems to be his attempt to paraphrase this, the Bera Tilt Myth Fame, seeming to mean that Bera Tilt Myth Fame means something like, you know, he can't cause peace between two or something like that. Now, this tilt is probably an otherwise lost adjective cognate with gatils in Gothic, which means good or fitting, or till in Old English, which means good, more of a moral quality good. So, for example, in Luke 9.62 in Gothic, we read, Gatils ist in Thiudo, Gardia Gudis is fit for the kingdom of God. Or the Old English saying, Till Montilis and Thomas Meris, a good man minds a good and tame horse. Now, I think the best explanation, I originally, in my translation of the Poetic Edda, which was largely work done in about 2013. Uh, I took for granted the sort of default explanation which draws from Snorri's paraphrase of this, which is that Tyr doesn't know how to settle differences between men. But Alfred Jakobsen proposed what I think is a pretty persuasive, simpler argument that actually this is just the simple adjective or adverb in this case, and then accusative neuter singular. That means good, so well here because it's an adverb, and that he's simply making fun of him for not being able to carry things with two hands, right? So, shut up, Tyr. You don't know how to carry well with two, and the noun that goes with two that's not stated is hands, not men. You can't carry, you don't know how to carry well with two hands. I like that a lot better now. Um, you know, now that I have a little bit more, I guess, uh, well, you know, years more of independent readings and this stuff. And I think that it comports a lot better with the sort of simpler way that Loki makes fun of everybody in this poem, right? Everybody's a whore. Everybody, you know, gets their mouth pissed in and things like that. Like, what what does it mean if he's insulting him as not being able to make peace between people or something? You know, it's, it's just, it's a very vague kind of gesturing insult compared to all this other stuff. So I think that's what it's about. It also comports well with Tyr's answer to it, which is, Handar emek vanr, enthu prothers witness, bol er begya thro. 
Ulfki hefir og vel er í bondumskál býða Ragnarökkurs. I am lacking a hand, ek am von der Hander, and you of the famous monster, Rother's Witness Fenrir. So I'm lacking a hand, you're lacking your son. Each, well, a bale, bowl, a curse, a horrible thing, is the longing of both, er thro begya. A remarkably sympathetic remark, right? I lost my hand, you lost your son, both of us, you know, I, I suffer a lot from that loss. The wolf also doesn't have it well. Ulf hever ok vel gi, the gi on wolf is the negative. Who shall await er skal bida Ragnarökkurs, bida is another noun, a verb that takes a generative noun on its object. So Ragnarok in chains, e bondum. And it's notable that in the Poetic Edda, in the Codex Regis manuscript where Locusena is preserved, um, this is the only poem in that manuscript where Ragnarok is called the same thing Snorri calls it, which is Ragnarökkur, Twilight of the Gods. And the other poems in the Poetic Edda, in Wolves, Wild, Bots, Even Small, it's probably a couple others that mention it that I can't think of off the top of my head. It's Ragnarok, Fates of the Gods. Look, he says in 40, Thegi thu tyr that var thin konu, at hon otti mog with mer. Olne penning have their thu thes aldregi van retis vessel. Silence, tyr. It happened to your wife, that var thin konu, that she had a son with me. You had never for this thu have their aldregi thes. A small measure of cloth and all nor penny ne penning in compensation von retis poor man vessel so i slept with your wife and i didn't give you anything to make up for it uh tears wife is never mentioned anywhere we don't know who tears wife is and uh if this specific story refers to some specific myth uh it's absolutely not preserved Freuer 41 says ulv se ek ligia o rosi hürer uns ryuvask regin Thwi mundu nas namathu nu thegir bunden bolvasmither. I see the wolf lie before the river mouth, exe uruv legia hir or rosi, until the gods are broken, uns regen ryuvask. A rare example of um, a passive use in the medio passive. It could also be reciprocal until the gods destroy one another. The ruling powers regen destroy one another. Although that seems to give a little too much status to the Jotnar. To it you will go next, is I guess the best way to put this. Thvi mundu na. So you will thu munt with the thu assimilated to the ending of munt after it's been affixed to it. Next to it, nas thvi. So you, th that's your fate next, more or less. Unless you shut up now. Nema thu thegir nu. Bound. Bundin, smith, creator, maker of curses, bolva smither. So, uh, you will be next bound, thu mont nast bundin, like it thvi, I guess is a better way to take that, unless you are silent now, smith of evils. Look, said 42, guli koipta lets tu gumis dotor oxelder titswo sverd. En er muspel sunnia rida murk vid uvir, veits da thu thu vesal, hue thu vegar. I guess he calls both uh, Tyr and Freuer vesal, poor. You let, or you had, you ordered, let's to Gimir's daughter, Gimis daughter, be, and then B is missing, Vera is missing, this is very typical in poetry, be purchased koifta with gold, guli, and you gave your sword. So, ok, seldir, thet, spare, swo. Uh, this is, of course, a direct reference to the story that we know from the Eddic poem for Skirnis or Skirnis Mall, where uh, this is exactly how Freud gets his wife Gerda. But when Muspel's sons and er Muspel's sonir ride over Mirkwood, rida über Mirkvid, you don't know then, poor man, how you will fight. 
Veitsatu Thovas of Huethu Vegar. And the uh, Sons of Moosebell, of course, are some of the monsters that will fight the gods at Ragnarok. Now, Big Vir, this is for our servant, says, 43. Veitsatu Evek Uthli Atok Sem Ingunar Froer Oxwo Selict Sitter. Mergis Mara Molda Ekthor Main Kroku Oklemda Alla I Lidu. You know, if I had, if ek attack, so ek, it's there twice, uh, a nature, a character, Uthli, like Ingunar Freuer, like Freuer of Ingun, and such a blessed seat, Oxwall Selk Setter, I would grind, ek mulda, subject, subjunctive past, the curse crow, main kroku, that's what he's calling Loki here. Smaller than marrow, smara mergi, or narrower than marrow. And I would, subjunctive past again, I would lame all the limbs, alalidu, in him, e. And then the object of the preposition is left out when it's a personal pronoun, as it often is in old forms. Look, he turns around and says, 44, what er that it litla erek that logra sekok snap vist snapir? At Eurum Frois Mundu Avera und Quernum Klaka. What is that, the little one, Hotatatit Litla, which I see Eric Sek wagging his tail, Lokra, and who. This is like scavenges scavengingly, snappier snap feast. You will always be, Dumont Vera A, at the ears of Freuer at Frois Eurum and chirping ok klaka under the mills und quernum, implying that he's, you know, he's cowardly. He's going to be hiding in, in under millstones or something when fighting starts. Well, Big Vir contests that. He says in 45, Big Vir ek heiti en mik brodan kveða góð ol ok gumar þvi em ek her hróðugur at drekka hró Megir Alir Ol Saman. I'm named Bugvir, a Kati Bugvir, and all the gods and men, Ol Gold Okumar, say me, Kreda Mik, hot tempered uh, Brothan. So they say, you know, I'm actually I'm, I have a fighting disposition. I am proud of it here, Ek M Hrothagrthvi Hair, that the sons of Hrofter, the gods, Drink all drink alir dreka their ale together all saman. Look, he says forty six. Thegi thu bigvir thu kunir al dragi de la medmonum mat ok thicki flet straw fin anemotu tho ervogu verar. Silence, bigvir. You never knew thu kunir al dragi to share food with men de la mat medmonum. You never knew how to serve men food. Right? You're that stupid. You don't even do your job well. And they couldn't find you, ok ne motu fina thick, in the straw on the floor, he flets straw, when men fought tho er verar vogu. So he's making him sound really small. Maybe Big Vir is really small. Maybe he's a dwarf. It's not very clear what Big Vir and Boila are. Um, but he's, you know, he's going to be hiding in the straw on the floor when fighting starts, or under millstones, things like that. It seems, seems like if Big Vir isn't literally small, Loki wants to make him sound really tiny. Heimdallar said, 47, Olor ertu Loki, swo ertu ert urviti, hui ne letskadu Loki. Thwi at ov drukja velder alda huim ersina melgi ne manat. You are drunk, Loki, ertu Olor Loki. So that you are crazy, Swatu er Urviti. Why don't you calm yourself down, Loki? Hui ne letskadu, Loki. And there's a lot going on in that compound, letskadu. Let you ask us calm yourself down. So we would have let, then sk, which is the reflexive, so calm, write yourself down, and then the negative ah, and then thu is suffixes thu. So letskadu did not calm yourself down. Because over drinking throughout Ov Drukya causes every man, Vilder Huem Alda, 
when he does not remember his prattle, his words. Er sina malgine manat. Um, so there's a causation that's implied there. It's like drinking too much causes everybody not to remember or maybe not to mind manat. Uh, his his prattle, his kind of empty words, and he's using a really undignified word there for speech. That's why I'm translating as prattle and not speech or talk or words or something. At least as I'm reading it right now. All right, 48. Loki says, Thegi thu heimdalar thervar i ordaga et liota livum laget. Ergu baki thumut e vera ok vaka goda. Some issues here too. So silence, Heimdall. For you, there, there was in early days, Vari Ordaga, an ugly life made. Yota Liv Laget. So, so far, this kind of makes sense. Early on, you were destined to lead a really ugly life. You will always be Thumunt A Vera with an Argu, I'll come back to this, with an Argu back, and be awake, Vaka, guardian of the gods, for the golden. So what is he saying about his back? There's two things this could really be. Um, if it's from Aurugur, that would mean damp or dirty, so you always have a damp back, you always have a dirty back. It could also be from Orthugur, because the uh, orthography in the Codex Regius, as many other manuscripts at this time, doesn't really distinguish between what we write as the hook O in classical Old Norse orthography today and the AU diphthong. So does he always have to stand up with a straight back? Or does he always stand up with a dirty back? It is really hard to know. Now, if it's the dirty part, that would make sense with what we read in Volspa 19, that the tree Yggdrasil is ausin huita auri, that it's doused with white dirt or clay or mud. So maybe he's leaning against the tree. Or maybe he's making fun of him for having a straight back because he's just got to stand all the time and be awake all the time, right? Like this is your dirty... Your, your ugly life that's been made for you that you, you're just standing up all the time uh, it's really hard to know and there may be something else uh, that's been lost here that would have been more explanatory okay Skadi says 49 let er ther loki muna tu lengi swo leka lausum halla thvia teko hjorvi skulu ins hrim kaldamagar gornum bindagod it's easy for you, Loki, letter there, Loki. You will not, Muna too, so long, Swo Lengi, play with a free neck. Leka Lausum Hala. Um, necks often come up in expressions for freedom in Old Germanic languages because I guess apparently in uh, Old Germanic times their Celtic, Slavic, Baltic, whatever slaves uh, might often have worn a collar. So if you have a free neck, you're a free man, you're not a slave. So Loki may soon be collared because fiat the gods god shall skulu bind binda you thick on a sword o hjorvi with the guts gornum of the rhyme cold sun in rim kaldamagar i.e your rhyme cold sun your dead son they're gonna kill your son they're gonna bind you to a sword with his guts now it does distinctly say hjor sword here snorri of course says they bind him to a rock. I guess there's no reason to think that they couldn't bind him to a sword and a rock, right? Make it extra uncomfortable. But it's not very... Uh, there's, there's no reason to think this just means uh, rock, that Hjor has some other meaning as, as rock. You can take it that way, because that's Snorri's explanation, but this says they tie him to a sword. And also, don't you love how... Uh, the word order is so scrambled from an English perspective here in 49 and then in 50, where Loki says, Vetstu ev mik o hjorvi skulu ins hrim kalda magar gornum binda god, hirster ok yfster var ekat fjordlagi tars ver o thjatsa threvum. You know, if the gods shall bind me on a sword with the guts of my cold dead son which the prose order of that is vetstu ev go mik if ev go the skulu binda mik o hjorvi 
Gordon and Sareem Galdemager. It's completely different from the old, old Norse Bodic word over here. I was first and last, Ekvar Fuster og Uster, at the killing at Fjordlagi when we fought Thars Ver Thrivum on Theatsi. Presumably against Theatsi. Theatsi is Skadi's dad. Skadi says 51, Vets du er Fyrster og Uster, var du at Fjordlagi, tho er er og Theatsa Thrivu, fro minum veum og vongum, skulu ther a cold roth coma. So she says, you know, if you were first and last at the killing when y'all fought Theatsi. <sighs> For you, there, from my holy places and valleys, from minum veum ok vongum, shall always come skulu a coma cold counsels. I'll always advise doing cold things to you. And actually, women uh, having cold rod is a... Uh, Cold advice, cold counsels is a kind of trope in Old Norse. Look, he said, 52, Letari i molum vartu vid lauvoyar son, thor thu lets mer o bethin bovet. Getit verder os sliks e ver gorva skulum telia vomen vor. You were, thu vart, lighter, easier, more pleasant, letteri, in speech i molum with lauvoysa, which of course is Loki. When you let me be invited, though if thou letst mer bodet, with fair I'm missing, into your bed, or thin bed, such becomes spoken to us, <laughs> sleeks, further gets it us. And remember, gets a, when it means mention, has, takes a genitive object, that's why we have sleeks and genitive. When we shall count our flaws. Or if we shall count our flaws, ever sculum telia for fomen thoroughly. Gorpa. Then Siv walked forward and presented Loki uh, mead in a glass, and she said, Hel verthu nu Loki, octak vid rim kolki fulum forts miadar. Helder thu hana eina lothir med osa sonum, fama leusa vera. Be you now hail healthy Loki, Verthu nu hail, and receive takve glass, Hrimkalki, full of old mead, fulum forns, miadar. And the reason Hrimkalki fulum is dative is because takve tak receive takes a dative object. Rather than, although rather here almost seems to me more like in hopes that, so I'll read it that way, in hopes that you let her alone, i.e., me alone, say of the speaker. Uh, among the sons of gods, meth also sonum, be vera flawless. So receive this and leave me alone. <laughs> All right, don't say anything bad about me. So Han took with Hornia Drakov, he, he took, he received the horn and he drank it down and he said, 54, to siv ein thu varier, if thu swo varier, for a chrome at very. Ein ekveit swa at ekvita thikyum hor oka florida ok varthat so in lavisi loki. You would be alone if you were so, if thu varis will notice this varis, both subjunctive, so counterfactuals. So you would, you would be alone if you were so wary and cold to a man, vor ok rom at veri. I alone know. Or so I seem to know, enik veit so atek vita thikyunk, of a man whore, whore, and one against Thor, ok of Florida. Florida, pig writer for some reason, is one of Thor's names. And that was, ok that var, that the saw in deceit wise Loki, lavisi Loki. So I know that you had a whore man, and it was me. Boila, for his woman's servant, says 55, Fjol ol skjolva, hig ek o for verra heimant lorida. Han rather ro them a rugger hair, gold ol o kuma. Odvar and shake, ol fjol skjolva. I think floridi, Thor, ek hig florida, to be on a journey, verra o for from home, heimant. So he's coming from home, he's coming from Oscar. He stopped in Oscar on his way back from Jotunheimar where he's been fighting Jotnar and he's coming 
westward now to Von Hamer, I guess. He rules calm for, so he will shut up on rather row. That one who here slanders, er her rugir, all the gods of men, old gold okuma. Loki said 56, Thegi tu boila, tu ert bugvisk fan, ok meini blandin mjok. O kynjan meira koma med osa sonum, ol ertu degedreitin. Silence, Boila, you are Bigvir's wife and much blended with cursing either, again, a cursor or someone who is accursed. A greater monster, Mera O Kinyan, uh, did not come, kom a, among the god's sons, med osa sonum. You, neater, are all dirty, thu degya ert ol dritin. So you're a monster and you're dirty and you're married to a moron. <laughs> Um, by the way, that word degya neater is uh, cognate with the last half of the English word lady because the, uh, the Lord is the guardian of the loaf of bread. He's the chlav weird, and the lady is the uh, neater of the loaf of bread. She's the chlav uh, dia in Old English. Then Thor came and he said, 57, Thegi thu rog vatr, der skal min truth hamar mjolnir mol fyr nema. Her the clettrepec there holds the av, oc verder thoth in of yorvium farits. Silence. Sissy creature, rog vater. My strength hammer, mean through the hammer, mjolnir, shall prevent speech for you, skull of your nema mold there. I knock ek drep the rock of shoulders, her the clet, rare kinning here in Edic poetry. Off your neck, off Holsey there, and and then becomes Akthol Verder, your life gone. Thinu Hjorbi Um Farit. Loki said, 58, Yardar Bur er her nu in common, hui thrasir thu swo Thor. En tho Thor er thu eki er thu skalt with Ulven Vega, oxpelger han alan sig fodor. The son of earth, Bur Yardar, is now come in here, er, nu, come in here. Why do you rage so, Thor? We thrust your thu, swall, Thor. But you did not dare at all, and thu, Thor it eki, when you shall, or you will not dare at all, when you shall, Thor er thu, skalt, fight against the wolf, Vega with Ulven, and he swallows Sigfather, victory father, whole. Of course, victory father, that's Odin, although, and this does say folder, distinctly father in the manuscript, not folder, uh, which is the more archaic form of that, which I think might mean orderer rather than father, but it's clearly father here. So he's referring to Ragnarok when uh, the wolf Fenrir will swallow Odin. Of course, wolf can also be used for other monsters it can be used for, for example, Midgard's former, the Midgard serpent, Jormungandr. Um, Thor doesn't fight Fenrir at all in the uh, sort of canonical version of Ragnarok that we get from Volspa and, and Snorri's Volspa derived account, but maybe he does fight Fenrir in some other version of the story that we don't know about anymore. Otherwise, I could be talking about him fighting the Midgard Serpent instead. Thor said 59, Thegi thu rog vater ther skalmin truth hamar mjolnir mol fur nema, up ek ther verp oko elster vega sidan thik mangiser. So be silent, sissy creature. My strength hammer Mjolnir will prevent your speech. I will throw you up, ek verp there up, and onto the eastern roads, ok o estervega. No man will see you afterward, mangi ser thick sidan. Look, he said, 60, auster forum thinum skaltu aldregi segia segium pro, sitzi hanska thumlungi knuk there thu ein heri, ok thotisk a thu tho thorvera. You shall never, Thuskalt Aldregi, tell Segya, men, Segyum, about your eastern journeys, Fro Thinum Alsterforum. Since you crouched, seats Thu Hunuk there, in a glove's thumb part, a Hanska Thumlungi, and you did not seem to be Thor then, Ok Thu Totiska Vera Thor Thor. Obviously, a reference to the story that we read in Snorri about uh, their encounter with Utgar the Loki. And it's interesting that here he calls uh, Thor an Ain Harry, 
uh, you know, bold man, fighter. Typically that word is actually just reserved for the, the dead men who are in uh, Valhall. 61 Thor said, Thegi thu rog vater therskal min truth hamar mjolnir mol per nema. Hendi eni hugri drepek the krugnis bana swa at ther brotnar benahuat. Silence is a creature. My strength hammer mjolnir will prevent your speech. I will strike you ek drep thick with the killer of Hrungnir, that's his hammer mjolnir, with my right hand, hendi eni hugri. So that each bone in you breaks. Swal at huat bena ther brotnar. Look, he says 62. Liva at la ek mer langan alder thotu hut tir hamri mer. Skarpar olar thotu ther skrimis vera. Ok matir a thu tho nestino. Ok spaltz thu tho hungry hail. I think I'll live. Ek at la mer liva a long life, langan alder. Though you threaten me with the hammer, Thotu Hutir Mer Hamri. Skrimir, this is Utgartha Loki's pseudonym and the story where he encounters Thor and Loki again, that's in uh, the prose in him. Skrimir's leather straps, Skrimir's all are seemed sharp to you, Thotu Skarparthir, Pharaoh, and you could not get your lunch, Ok. And you went hungry then, completely with hunger, hail hungry. And this is very, very much like the story, again, of Ukrad Loki and Snorri. So Snorri is no doubt drawing on a, on a very genuine old tradition there. 63. So the second half after the repeated first half is Hrungnir's killer, my hammer, will bring you into hell, mun koma ther i hell. Remember, koma, when transitive, means bring below uh, fir nedan, the corpse gates, no grinder. Look, he said 64, kvadek fir osum, kvadek fir osasonum, that's me kvati huger. En fir ther enu mun ek ut ganga, thviat ek vetat thu veger. I have spoken for the gods, ek quad fir osum. I have spoken before the gods' sons, ek quad fir osa sonum. That which my mind encouraged me, that's huger huati mek. But for you alone, if you're there enum, I will go out, ek mun ganga ut, because I know that you fight. Thviat ek veta thu veger. 65. Still, Loki speaking. Ol gurder thu agir and thu aldri munt sidan sumbl at gura un gura. Ega thin ol er her in the air, licky uver logi og brenni thero baki. You made ale agir, thu gurder ol agir, and you never will make a feast again. And thu munt gura aldri sumbl sidan. All your possessions, ol thin ega which is here within, it's ega is singular, a translate is plural, which are here within, er, eru, or er, any here. May fire burn over, logi leki uvir, subjunctive, and may it burn you on your back. Ok, breni, there, old baki. Now the poem is reserved in the Codex Regis, ends with this prose epilogue, called Concerning Loki, Fro Loka. In Eptir theta falsk loki i fro nangers forsi i lax liki. Thar toku asir han, han var bundin me thormum sonar nara, en narvi sonar hans var that vargi. Skadi tok etron ok festi up iver anlit loka, draup thar or eter. Sigun kona loka satar ok helt munlaug under etrit. En er munlaugin var full bar hun ut etrit, and medan dreub etret o loka. Tho kiptis kan swo hart vid at thadan av skalv jord ol. That eru nu kalathir land skalthar. So after this, Loki hid himself falsk in a in the waterfall of Fronanger, Fronanger's forsi, in the likeness of a salmon, Ilaks Ilax Liki. There the gods took him, Thar Asir Tokuhan. He was bound with the guts of son Nari, and Narvi, his son, became a 
wolf, the negative evil word for wolf, Varger. Skadi took a poisonous snake, Aetororm, and fastened it up over Loki's face, and poison dripped there out, out of the snake. Sigyn, I think this is the only time she's mentioned <laughs> at the Poetiketis in relation to this story, uh, his wife. Sigyn, Loki's wife, sat there and held a big basin, a moon loud, under the poison. But when the basin was full, she carried out the poison, but meanwhile the poison dripped onto Loki. Then he jerked, kipped this so hard against it, fifth, that from there, thought and of, the whole world shaked, shook, old Yorth skull. That is now called earthquakes. That's Eronu Kaladir Lanskoptar. And now, about an hour into this, losing my voice. <laughs> I hope that's been useful to you. And for beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the best.